There are three things I want to mention I'd like to share with you about our next speech, speaker. Number one, <coughs> this city club member has devoted nearly all his public life to public service, service with a special emphasis on education. His, number two, his appearance here today underscores his enormous commitment to the education of our children and adults. And many of you were here three weeks ago when the same person was here for the chief executive officer of the Chicago Public Schools, Barbara Bird Bennett. Number two, he has the courage to take on the toughest issues, education, public safety, and the budget. Number three, every time the City Club of Chicago has asked him to speak at a charitable event, Ms. Recordia Special Olympics or any one of them, he's agreed on the spot. Please welcome back to the City Club of Chicago, Mayor Rahm Emanuel. <laughs> Mayor Emanuel. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jay, when you kind of froze there on number three, I was worried that you were having a Governor Perry moment. Uh, I have three reasons. <laughs> I'm going to have a Rubio moment and go for water in a second. Uh, lean over and do that. First of all, thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, the City Club uh, for having uh, Cheryl Hyman, the head of the City Colleges, uh, to speak, the Chancellor. Thank you very much. Because while a lot of time is spent appropriately focused on K through 12 and what goes on at CPS, our city has a robust community college system. More people go to our community colleges in the city of Chicago, 127,000, than all four-year institutions combined in their student body. And we have the largest Catholic university in the world here in the city of Chicago. More kids more continuing adults go to our community colleges than all four-year institutions combined in the city. And yet it was never a focus on and by the city of what we should seek with our community colleges. And the most telling example for me when I talked and I wanted to talk with Cheryl about what we were going to do in the board and Paula Wolf and everybody was I was on a train stop at 35th, now closed for the summer under construction. And a young man who had just left Harold Washington was on his way to a job. And I said, what are you studying? He says, business administration. And I realized he was doing everything you would want him to do. He's holding on a full-time job, going to school. And the question was, when he came out of Harold Washington with a degree in business administration, did the person at HR on the other side doing the interview, did that, when it said Harold Washington on his resume, in the same way that any one of us have a school on our resume. Did it open the door? Did it get him a seat at the table? Did it get him in an interview? And what really we are doing now is to make sure that all the continuing adults and all the kids that go to that school, whether it's Harold Washington for Business Administration, whether it's Olive, Olive Harvey for Transportation, Distribution, Logistics, whether it's Malcolm X for Healthcare, and we can go on, Wright College for IT, Daily for Advanced Manufacturing, well, culinary and hospitality over at uh, our other schools at Kennedy King, we have to make sure that every one of the people that graduate, when it says on their resume, it has a door that opens and the person at HR says, come on in and sit down. I want to talk to you. I am proud that under Cheryl's leadership, our graduation rate that was at 7% is now at 12%. We have the largest graduating class in 20 years. Our enrollment is up 5%. We have over 100 companies that are helping us develop the curriculum, the training, to make sure that the kids and the adults that go to our community colleges, when they're going for a business administration, it's being designed by the people that are going to hire them. In the same way that at Kellogg and Booth Business School, many, many Fortune 100 companies go in and design that program. So when the graduates come out, they, they know 
the person hiring the next treasurer, the next CFO, the next person working in the, in the financial sector part of their businesses were trained and educated on the curriculum that they helped design. We should have that for the people that go to our community colleges. And the most essential thing that we want to do as a city, as a state, as a county, is to make sure that the people that are hiring have absolute certainty that whether it's Booth Business School or Harold Washington Business Administration, that we can give them absolute labor and hiring certainty in their uh, choices. And if we can give them that, every company will be beating the doors down to come to the city of Chicago and the state of Illinois. And I am proud that Cheryl has aligned our interests. I want you to also understand that this is real. The sous chef here, Josh Rodriguez, out of Kennedy King uh, Washburn Culinary School. The kids, I want every one of them to stand up at Aon that are also doing their program there, there uh, from Harold Washington. Give them all a hand here. I talked to each of those kids before. Every one of them told you how this was an essential part of sharpening their skills, learning more about the business, getting a job at Aon or an internship at Aon. Some are now going on to DePaul UIC for, for their four-year degree. We have aligned the education with where we're going to see the greatest growth. Years ago, the city of Chicago had the worst graduation rate of any community college system in the country. Four weeks ago, the World Bank was in studying what we're doing as a college to career program as a model for every other city in the country. Just a year ago, President Obama cited the College to Career Program as a national model in his State of the Union. Now, it's not just that recognition. That's great. I'm glad the World Bank did it, and I'm glad that President Obama did it. It is the recognition that Aon says when they look at the Harold Washington graduates, says those are the kids we want to bring in. That's the recognition that is, a medal, that is the test of our medal and whether we're doing the right thing. That is what we're seeking in this. And I cannot think of anybody better to lead this reform, what I call the quiet revolution at our city colleges, than a graduate herself who has the steel, the determination that makes sure that every one of those 127,000 kids that are going to our community colleges, whether they pick something in advanced manufacturing, business administration, healthcare, whatever field they so choose, they get the best qualified education. And when they put Harold Washington on their resume, the door is open, the seat is there, and they're ready for their interview. And with that leadership is Cheryl Hyman, who has done a tremendous job. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Cheryl Hyman, the chancellor. And with that, I'll take questions. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, for that kind in introduction. And thank you really for being City College's greatest champion. I tell everybody I interview with that he's City College's biggest recruiter and our greatest champion. So thank you very much for your support. I also want to say a special happy birthday to another big advocate of our work, Beth Swanson. Thank you, Beth. She's the deputy for uh, education and also a big advocate for City College's. So thank you. I want to thank Jay, of course, for inviting me back to speak at the City Club for the third year running. But Jay, I have to tell you, if you give me one more City Club mug, you might start seeing them on eBay. Um, so thank you for having me back. It's always an honor to be invited to provide an update on City College's work. And I want to thank all of you all for coming out to spend the afternoon to hear about our work. Now, rather than an icebreaker today, I thought we'd offer you the real thing, an icing breaker, mm -hmm. in the form of a cupcake covered with, I'm told, buttercream icing, courtesy of our students from City College's Washburn Culinary Institute, and a cookie that all you need is one from the students at our French pastry school. Um, make sure you take one on your way out. Everyone will receive a bag with those goodies in them. One of the hallmarks of reform at City Colleges is that we are working to ensure that our students have real world experience. So the tasty treat includes a reminder of the two restaurants our students run, the Parrot Cage at South Shore Cultural Center 
and Sakia at Kennedy King where you can go and sample their work. And as you've heard, a Washburn alum, uh, Josh Rodriguez, who's right there with the baseball cap on, um, is, is actually the sous chef here at Maggiano. So he had a hand in your meal today. We have many, many stories of City College alumni accomplishing amazing things in our city. From preparing the food we eat at high-end and neighborhood restaurants, to staffing advanced manufacturing plants, to preserving the safety of our streets, teaching our children, and taking care of us at major hospitals across Chicago. And you might find a City College's alum actually running the City College's. <laughs> Our students and alum are what make this city work. As I said, when we launched reInvention three years ago, we should celebrate these stories, anecdotes of our students' success, but we must also embrace data. Today, I will discuss in quantifiable terms where we've been and where we are headed over the next five years. When I first came to City Club three years ago, I unveil some staggering data about City College's performance. But I also came with solutions in the form of a plan for reinvention. Three years later, I am fortunate to have be, been reappointed by Mary Manuel for a second term as chancellor. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. The picture for City College's is much brighter today, though we still have a long way to go. So first, let's look at how far we've come. When we launched reInvention, we had to shift the paradigm of community college from an institution focused solely on access or the number of students enrolled to a system focused on both access and success, meaning that our students complete their programs and go on to further education or right into the workforce. We ushered in a new era of accountability where everyone at City Colleges is accountable for student success. We changed the job description of our board members, our presidents, and my own to include student outcomes. We also, we also introduced student success pay into two key contracts with our full-time faculty and adult educators, replacing retention pay with pay for performance. When I arrived, the graduation rate was 7%. The average rate among the rest of Illinois community colleges was 22%. Among community colleges in the top US cities, the average was 16%. Put simply, we were underperforming by any measure. After much, much internal debate about the 7% graduation rate in particular and data in general, everyone stepped up to focus on what is important for our students. Our faculty, staff, and students on the reinvention task force teams have logged more than 65,000 hours identifying our most pressing challenges and devising solutions. This year, through the hard work of our faculty and staff, as you heard, we expect the graduation rate will rise to 12 percentage points, which is a 71% increase since the launch of reinvention. Now, because the federal graduation rate only counts first-time, full-time students, a fraction of our population, we also look at the number of completers. And this year, the number of students earning an associate's degree will reach nearly 4,000, which is an 80% increase since the launch of reinvention. Now you heard the mayor say that that's the largest in 20 years, but what I wanted to surprise him with today is that we went back and searched all of City College's record. It's actually the largest graduating class in City College's history ever. <laughs> Our degree increase from 2011 to 2012 was more than four times the Illinois Community College average. Since the launch of reinvention, we have emphasized enrollment with a purpose. That is programs that lead our students to further education or careers. Credit enrollment, one such type, is up 15%. Over the same period 
Illinois community colleges were only up 7% on average, and nationally, community colleges were down 2%. So we're clearly outperforming our peers. Among our students are CPS juniors and seniors taking advantage of our early college programs, shortening their path to a college degree and saving on college tuition. Enrollment in our dual credit program, which lets CPS students take college level courses at their high school, has doubled since 2012. And our dual enrollment program, which allows high school students to take classes on our campus, has nearly quadrupled since, two th since fall of 2011. As the mayor says, we have one education system in Chicago, from early childhood K through 12 to our community colleges. And with his gentle nudging, we are increasingly coordinating. We've also made major changes in our adult education program. For our students in need of a GED, English as a Second Language, or adult basic education, according to the 2010 census, almost 330,000 Chicagoans lack a high school diploma. Yet only 45,000 people are enrolled in a GED or an ESL program. We noticed we could do better reaching out to those in need. We discovered some of our community education sites were located in areas where the demand was 10 to 20 years ago and not where the demand is today. Since this year, we have launched 30 new adult education sites in communities of need. We also expanded bridge programs that allow students to build skills in a career area and earn marketable credentials while developing basic literacy. And we expanded our gateway program, which provides counseling and scholarship support to ensure higher level uh, adult education students don't stop out, but continue to go on to college credit courses. When I was at the City Club last year, I told you our adult education enrollment was down 15%. Today I'm pleased to announce a turnaround. Our adult education enrollment is up 5% this year. GED enrollment is up 21%. And GED is no longer a terminal degree. The number of students gaining at least one level in adult education is also 50% higher. I will highlight two more signs of progress that give us confidence in our direction before we look ahead. Our region faces about a 9% unemployment rate, but has tens of thousands of jobs available. This is because of both a skills gap, people need the skills to successfully compete for open positions, and an information gap because many people don't know what jobs are available and what they need to do to seize them. The mayor and I launched College to Careers in 2011 to tackle both of these issues. Now our faculty and staff are working with industry leaders to revamp our curriculum to ensure it prepares students for the 500,000 plus jobs coming over the next decade in the six fields that will generate 80% of our region's job growth. And as you heard, those fields are IT, healthcare, culinary, hospitality, business, advanced manufacturing, and transportation distribution and logistics. We have more than 100 college to careers partners from business industries to four-year institutions. And more than 700 city colleges students have since found a job or paid internship in their college to careers field. Just like Bartos, Carla, Carmen, and Tori at Aon, who the mayor introduced you to earlier. With new courses in IT problem solving, supply chain management, and insurance launching this fall, we expect their ranks will continue to grow. As you've heard, College to Careers has attracted national, even international attention as an economic development model with delegations from the World Bank England and Southeast Asia coming to learn more. In fact, I'm headed to DC this week to discuss college to careers with more World Bank senior staff. As we innovate and change, we must ensure we continue to deliver education efficiently. And that's where our operational reforms come into play. 
our proposed fiscal year 2014 budget, which our board should consider next month, is balanced with no tuition or tax increases. In fact, we have had no property tax increases since the launch of reinvention, and we've held a line on tuition for the last couple years. Now, I want to commend the General Assembly for their steadfast support of community colleges. In May of 2013, the General Assembly voted to hold level our state funding and the appropriation for the Illinois Community College Board, recognizing we believe the value community colleges bring to our students, their families, and the role we play in the economy. But we have also been doing our part. Over the last three years, through strategic centralization, cuts to management budget, and improve efficiencies, we have saved 51 million that we have reinvested in academic and student supports. From renegotiating contracts with our full-time and adult education faculty, clerical staff, and TV station electricians, we will save taxpayers 15 million over the term of the prior contracts. These savings make investments possible. Strong reserves have enabled us to launch a $524 million capital plan, including a new Malcolm X College campus and a new TDNL center at Olive Harvey College. The new Malcolm X College campus, adjacent to the Illinois Medical District, will feature a virtual hospital among the latest instructional tools. And the TDNL Center will contain a real working warehouse that will serve as the new distribution center for city colleges, which our students will run. Now, as you can see, we haven't taken much of a breath the last three years. And with our students' future at stake, we just can't afford to. But the work is paying off, and our plan ahead is just as ambitious. Today, I'll share highlights of our vision for City College's future. A copy of the five-year plan is at your seat. This plan will bring us closer to our goal of becoming a best-in-class community college system, of becoming an economic engine of our city, a key resource for employers looking to hire and four-year colleges looking to recruit, and first and foremost, a launching pad for our students onto further college and career success. Solely written and designed by City College's in-house team, the plan is the product of 18 months of data gathering and analyses that reviewed City College's past performance, lessons learned from reinvention, best-in-class community college results, to establish historical benchmarks and five-year targets on a host of key measures, from completion to retention, from employment to enrollment. When you set a goal with a hard number attached, you are more likely to attain it. And of course, it is also more obvious if you miss the mark. Sharing targets with the public is risky for any company or organization. It means you are accountable in a very real way. We have not been afraid of taking bold steps these last three years, and we won't stop now. I will share five key targets today among the many outlined in a plan and a few strategies that will allow us to reach those goals. First, five years from now in 2018, we expect the number of degrees awarded each year to have jumped by 37%. Given our 80% increase today, this is an attainable goal. We project to confer 5,400 degrees in 2018, nearly two and a half times the number when reinvention began. Based on studies that show earning an associate's degree compared to a high school diploma will yield an additional $423,000 in earnings over a person's lifetime. That means the 3,300 degrees our students have earned so far above and beyond the average when I arrived would equate to $1.4 billion in new lifetime earnings. Plus, with the new 12,000 degrees that are expected to be earned when we reach our goal, reinvention would be responsible for 6.6 .6 billion in new lifetime earnings for Chicagoans. That is the kind of economic development the mayor has been relentless in driving. And I know our faculty, staff, and above all, our students will rise to the occasion. 
At the same time, we expect to reach a graduation rate of more than 20 percentage points compared to 12 today. That will put us on par with community colleges nationally and equate to an increase of 67%. Now, why do we think this is possible? First, because we're determined. Second, others have done the same. Kansas City Community College went from 12% to 23%, a jump of 92% in six years. We will reach this goal through the second stage of reinvention, which we call reinvention to the seventh power. Reflecting the task force teams embedded at each of our seven colleges and allowing us to achieve reform at scale. The teams are building a student GPS or guided path to success that will create clear pathways to success for our students. The pathway system is similar to that which helped Valencia College in Orlando earn the Aspen Institute's prize for community college excellence. Students will be equipped with program maps outlining semester by semester the courses that will result in a certificate or a degree. Furthermore, some courses may be scheduled in blocks, making it easier for our students to plan and balance competing priorities like work and family. Students will be able to enroll in a whole program, not just courses, so they see their path to completion starting day one. These structural changes will allow us to reduce the time required to earn a degree. We will also continue to leverage our new investments in our veteran centers, our wellness centers that offer students social and emotional support and a new assigned advising system and early alert system allowing us to intervene with struggling students before it's too late. The second key target I'll point out is that by 2018, we expect that more than two thirds of students in occupational programs will be employed in their area of training, an 18% increase over today. College to Careers is at the heart of attaining this goal, particularly the partner relationships we are developing, the new and revamped programs in the six fastest growing fields will better align with workforce demand and our new soft skills training and newly enhanced career planning and placement services will be key to meeting this critically important target of helping us solve the region's skills and information gap. The third key target I want to call out today deals with transfer. By 2018, we expect more than half of our students will transfer to a four-year college following graduation, a 34% increase from today. Again, this target will benefit from college to careers as many of our C2C programs are indeed transfer track. We will also work closely with four-year institutions on meaningful articulation agreements and through our pathway effort, we'll see to it that students select courses that transfer so they receive full junior status in their desired field of study. One of this year's many great transfer students is here today, Ian Dobbins. I think Ian is here. Ian, stand up. Hey, Ian. I didn't see you over there. Now, Ian is transferring to Columbia University in New York City this fall, where he will double major in music and anthropology. And he saved thousands of dollars on his Columbia degree by coming to City Colleges first. Ian is clearly very smart. <laughs> Congratulations, Ian. When we reach our fourth key target, one third of our new remedial students will advance to college level work within one year an increase of 12% from today. Now, 87% of our students need some form of remediation. So we are working on this goal from multiple fronts. But one of our new approaches is with the National Testing Service, ETS, that is evaluating entering students on the basis of both cognitive and non-cognitive skills to better place students in appropriate courses at the onset of their academic program so that we give them full credit, not only for their abilities, but for their potential. Motivation is often an overlooked measure that we will start to take into account at City Colleges. A fifth target will build off our progress in adult education. By 2018, four times as many of our adult education students than today 
will transition into college level courses after one semester in a GED or ESL program. To reach this goal, we will continue to strengthen already successful bridge and transitional programs that are leading students to credit courses. These five targets and the rest of those in the plan are bold, but we believe ultimately achievable goals. They are consistent with our performance over the last three years, or they represent figures we believe to be newly attainable because of reforms we have and are putting in place. These goals are where we need to be in order to become what I call a best-in-class community college system. Now, when I say this, that city colleges will become a best-in-class community college system, I sometimes notice out the corner of my eye a few raised eyebrows. I believe some people think having such high aspirations considering where we are coming from is just simply wishful thinking. But as I tell our students, and as someone told me, you can't let history nor circumstances dictate your destiny. And had I did that, I would not be standing before you here today. We cannot hold diminished expectations for our students, nor can we hold them for our institution. When I think about success against all odds, I think of Gerardo Salinas, a proud member of City College's class of 2013. I single him out because he's been a personal inspiration to me and actually becoming a personal friend. Gerardo and his mother are here today. Can you please stand up and wave, Gerardo? Thank you. In adolescence, a retina detachment in both eyes left Gerardo completely blind. There would be no options for education or work in his small Mexican town. So when he was 13, his sisters and parents left for America to give him a better life in Chicago. He learned Braille and English at the same time, often not understanding anything that was being said to him. But once he mastered both, he thrived. As an undocumented immigrant, he had few options for college scholarships, no access to financial aid, no legal right to disability services for his education. But in spite of all this, he enrolled at Daly College, one of our city colleges, and he was able to pay his own way. Five years later, Gerardo is a city college's graduate. He recently received temporary status through the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program and now has a work permit and a social security number. This past semester, he took his first class in political science at the University of Illinois at Chicago, where he hopes to complete a bachelor's in 2016 and pursue further education in law or social work. Now, where most of us would have given up, Gerardo keeps going. Reforms like the immigration bill that Senator Durbin is shepherding through the Senate will help Gerardo's dream a reality. He is also the first recipient of a scholarship that I am personally funding for City College's students who face adversity but bravely forge ahead. Gerardo is one of 115,000 of our students striving to contribute their talents to our city. He is succeeding in spite of society's long odds and often low expectations. I am here to make certain that all of our students and our institution break free from the mentality of excuses, of low expectations, and realize their true potential, just like I did. I know I said that we must move past anecdotes and use data to make decisions, Data is critical to set targets and track our progress, but it is our students and their stories that inspire us and demand that City Colleges succeed. It is our students that make us determined to become the institution the nation needs us to be, the institution the mayor expects us to be, the institution I know we can be. Over the next five years, City Colleges will 
become an institution that ensures Chicago has the skilled workforce so companies can grow here in our city. An institution that four-year colleges look to for transfer students. An institution that taxpayers rely on to use resources efficiently and deliver unprecedented educational value in their communities. An institution that ensures that every single student succeeds exactly like I did. Thank you and go Blackhawks. Uh, we have uh, time for a few questions. Ernestina, where are you? Raise your hand. If you have a question for Cheryl, I, I've already asked her where, uh, on this cover where this woman went disappeared to. I don't recognize her, but uh, uh, any questions at all? Great. Thank you for coming. <laughs> well, as a former City College employee, I certainly have a question. It's not written out. Um, all these great ideas. Is the revenue going to be there to fund them? Yes. So that's a, a good question. Um, I think it will be. I think it's um, certainly we rely heavily on our state funding and other funding that we receive, and we need that. But one of the things we've been able to do is look at how we effectively use resources. I think one of the most important things we can do is focus on how best we use resources and how best we can get um, resources in. One of the things that the pre most of the presidents are here in, and um, the uh, officers of city colleges do over the last three years is what we call zero-based budgeting. So every year our budget starts at zero. And we look at what we spent, what we achieved, what we want to achieve for the next year, what it will cost and what resources are needed. But all through the year, every, I think, two weeks, we actually sit down and go over our targets, go over the span, and look at how we're using resources. So I think the funding uh, will be there if the state continues to uh, pass bills like they did this time. I think we'll be just fine. I should have let you go. Uh, all right. A uh, couple of people you may have heard of. Um, Tony Preckwinkle, Cook County Board President. Which of the challenges you face is the most critical? Oh, that's great. Besides dealing with me. Yeah, that. Uh, thank you. That's a great question, and I get asked that quite often, and most people expect me to say, well, you know, change in curriculum or doing something like that. It's not that. I think the biggest challenge with change is the same for city colleges as it would be for anybody else, and that's culture. I think the biggest thing that we have to work on is how do you get everybody rallied around the same sets of goals, headed in the same direction, how do you get buy-in, and how do you change the culture of any institution? And that's what I think reinvention did when we brought all of the faculty, staff, and students together around the district. It actually started to change the culture. You would be amazed that things start to work themselves out when people believe in what they're doing. Your pen. Okay, one last question from board member uh, uh, Joy Saxon, and this refers to what I think you said of your first time you were here, Cheryl. Uh, the Pell Grant kids, are we still having that problem of taking the money and dropping out? I'm glad someone asked that because I have a really good answer for that question. Um, so I said in my speech, and I was very deliberate about that, about uh, the low expectations uh, that people may sometime have about city colleges and other um, institutions. And when I first became chancellor, I heard, you know, well, there's this issue with, you know, students who get Pell Grants and then drop out. Well, first of all, that's only, I actually looked into that, and that's only about 10 or 11 percent. But secondly, uh, my answer was, First of all, if the students are coming there only to do that, then obviously they're trying to find a way to care for themselves. Now, shame on us if the only value they see is getting a Pell Grant then leaving. To me, that just meant I had more work to do. 
So for those students who are obviously trying to find a means of taking care of themselves, it is my job to show them that this institution is more valuable than a Pell Grant check. So I would say given our results, we're not having so much of that problem anymore.